Hey everyone, welcome back to the Alberta Roundup. I'm your host, Rachel Emanuel. I hope that you guys are enjoying your Christmas break. Today, we are going to be diving deeper into an issue that we discussed last week. A medicine hat school, handing out pamphlets on how to use illicit drugs. Today, we are joined by Jeff Park, the executive director of the Alberta Parents Union, to discuss what the impact was on students and families. We're joined by Jeff now. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining us today. So there was an incident at a Medicine Hat High School recently where students were given pamphlets on how to use illicit drug substances. Can you explain what happened here? Well, yeah, uh, a lot of schools bring in these outside groups, especially for health type education. It's been, uh, unfortunately, an all too common uh, exception to the kind of oversight that parents get to have into uh, into the kind of information that's coming into school. And unfortunately, when you start to make exceptions to the, where parents get to have oversight, such as outside groups coming in and talking about health concerns, then uh, you can have incidents like this where SafeLink, which um, used to be called AIDS Calgary and, and started as a, a safe sex education uh, organization, uh, came into the Medicine Hat High uh, career fair and was and was giving uh, giving out pamphlets on uh, safe crack smoking, safe meth smoking, safe cocaine uh, consumption. Of course, there is no such thing. But for a lot of these organizations, they came in from the AIDS epidemic into teaching six-year-olds about safe sex and there's no such thing as that either so it's a logical <laughs> it's a logical progression uh that un unfortunately we've 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 cut out this exception for health education um that is is starting to swallow more and more absurdities uh as we allow these things into schools so you obviously work with parents every day what was the response from your membership to this incident Outrage, a, a dis, disbelief, frankly, and uh, especially as it's revealed uh, that our taxpayer dollars paid for this, Medicine Hat taxpayer dollars, uh, municipal taxpayer dollars uh, support SafeLink for this kind of education. City of Calgary taxpayer dollars support SafeLink for this kind of education. We just learned that the, the province just gave SafeLink uh, eight hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars to curb, uh, to try to help curb the syphilis epidemic in Alberta. And of course, as with any of these organizations that come in with uh, these crackpot ideas, in this case, all too literally, uh, the uh, of course the federal government and Health Canada is also. So at every level, our tax dollars are are supporting kids being told insane things. And unfortunately, we're, we're in a situation where people are increasingly less surprised, uh, not less outraged, but less surprised because there's been a complete breakdown of the faith that parents have, uh, where public schools are supposed to be worthy of the public trust. We're supposed to be able to understand that we can maybe not agree with everything, but that in general, we can they can be a trusted source of information for our children. That trust has broken down largely. Absolutely. It is very angering when you think about it from the taxpayer's perspective. We're the ones who were paying for this to happen. Now, after this incident, SafeLink said, you know, we weren't actively handing out the pamphlets. They were just sort of at the booth, at the wellness center that was hosted at the high school. And they were removed within an hour of facilitators at the school asking us to remove them, sort of to say, you know, the damage maybe wasn't really that bad. What's your response to that? Of course, the uh, the the primary damage um, isn't in number of pamphlets handed out or anything like that. It is uh, in the trust that we believed that we could have uh, in these organizations. You know, they. I, I read the statements from the principal and the superintendent uh, and immediately said, they don't get it. There, there's, no, there's no reason this won't happen again. Uh, they haven't learned their lessons. They're, they're, they're basically defending um, the process that they used, 
uh, and not be in their case, not the outcome. In SafeLink's case, they've they've learned nothing, grown not at all. Their 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 apology was an apology that parents don't realize that their teens are already using drugs. Basically, uh, again, it was children as young as 14 years old that uh, that were at this fair, but but that was their apology that parents don't already know that their teens are using drugs. So, the the concerning thing is is not what it says about how many kids were exposed to information that might lead to an increased risk of normalization of and an increased risk of drug use by claiming that there is such a thing as safe consumption of these uh, very unsafe drugs, but that, um, but that the organizations responsible for this have learned nothing, uh, plan on reforming nothing about their own behavior. Right. So in your instance, you're saying, you know, the damage is already done. I've seen sort of an increased or rather decrease in trust in schools across the province, public systems. For parents who are really just tired of these kind of situations happening, what do you tell them when they're looking for other solutions, when they say, I don't feel that my kids are safe at public school anymore? What would your response be to a parent with that concern? There are a couple couple of levels uh, is... My, my immediate response for the sake of the kids is that often you do want to look at um, a different choice in education. If the, uh, if, the school that, if the school that your kids are going to has lost your trust, um, then Medicine Hat has a, a charter school, one of the few places outside of uh, Calgary and Edmonton that that's true. Obviously, there are independent schools everywhere that are very responsive to parent concerns, and they have to be because... Uh, because they only exist because parents chose them. Uh, unlike unlike the public system where often failure is rewarded uh, by by more money, uh, they they can only exist because parents choose them. Um, and uh, home education is becoming more and more accessible with more and more resource resources available uh, every year. It's it's becoming easier uh, for parents to do. And we're working now on. Uh, clarifying the rules around uh, learning pods where parents can share uh, uh, a, a even higher in a teacher or share a lot of the labor of uh, of being directly responsible for the education of their kids. So those choices in education are, are very important. But then also uh, school boards are extremely important. And it's something that uh, I think a lot of parents, grandparents, taxpayers, a lot of the normal salt of the earth people here in Alberta have ignored to our own detriment that level of government. Uh, and, and we've left it to ideologues who, uh, who see no issue with, with so many of the red flags that parents could have called out earlier uh, before, before we have kids being taught about safe meth consumption. Uh, we, we could have told you some of the red flags about organizations like safe link long before that uh but it's it's often ideologues with a very particular ideological agenda that are left for these school board seats uh rather than the uh regular parents grandparents taxpayers that that have uh a, the interest in just seeing kids educated and getting back to basics Great. Well, for parents who are listening, that gives you a lot of options to chew on in case you're wondering what to do about the state of our public school system here in Alberta and honestly, just across Canada. If you are looking for more information, you can go to Alberta Parents Union. Their website has lots of information available. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Rachel. And I'm going to close off this episode by responding to some of my insiders. If you're on the True North Insider list, you received an email in early December asking for your comments and questions that I would respond to on the show. So we're going to take a look at some of those now. Mark S. from Brooks said, Will Alberta finally separate from Canada in 2024? We are so sick of Trudeau. Mark, I have some bad news for you. I think it's going to be a while yet before we see enough sentiment to hold a yes referendum on separation from Alberta, if ever. I know that there is a lot of support for separation within my membership and among the rural parts of the province. People that have lived here for a really long time and have seen how the West has time and time again got an unfair deal 
from the federal government and from the rest of Canada, and they're simply sick and tired of it, and they think that Alberta would be better off on its own. That being said, I believe we might run into some issues with our interprovincial immigration. I've covered this extensively on the show. Alberta is receiving so many newcomers from the rest of Canada. More people are moving to Alberta than to any other province in Canada right now. And I wonder if these people who are coming here really understand why Alberta, why the cost of living is lower, why we don't have a provincial sales tax, and if they will continue to vote conservative or if they'll vote liberal or NDP or even for the Green Party or something crazy like that. Because often people move to a new area, they know what's better, but they don't really understand why. I believe it's in Texas. When you're going into Texas, they have a sign that says, don't California, my Texas. We need one of those signs when you're headed through Medicine Hat on your way into Alberta, a big sign that says, don't Ontario, my Alberta. Maybe we should get the Alberta government on that sooner rather than later. Phil from Toronto says, why does Calgary always have such lefty loony bin mayors? I thought Alberta was the most conservative province in the country. This is something I really wondered about as well when I moved to Alberta. We have just some of the worst mayors in all of Canada. There are definitely really bad municipal governments throughout the country, but Jody Gondek here and, and Emery Sohi in Edmonton, you know, just no good. We're seeing some really no good things from these city councils. The effort to cancel Canada Day and not have fireworks, just some of the most ludicrous stuff. I think the issue is that conservatives are so focused in Alberta on provincial politics and Canada wide, they're really focused on federal politics. And often people just don't pay as much attention to their municipal politics. So we need to once again, start really paying attention to our city governments, but also actively working in them and organizing effectively. That might mean we're gonna all decide on one conservative candidate and run one conservative councillor in every ward so that we have you know a bunch of conservative city councillors and maybe just endorse one conservative minded mayoral candidate so that the votes aren't split. And then of course the other and perhaps more obvious issue is that a lot of conservatives don't like to live in the cities. They like to live in the rural areas. They like to own land. They like having their property. They like having their privacy. These are all conservative values and things that I think are admirable and respected. But unfortunately, the result of that is that sometimes our cities just go down the drain pretty quickly. Caitlin M. from Calgary asked, how is your baby doing? My baby is doing wonderfully. He is a very good boy. He's vocal when he needs something, but otherwise he's not too fussy. And we've been pretty lucky with the sleep training thing. Uh, wasn't too painful. So he actually goes to bed at 7.30 most nights, which is amazing. I have a couple hours to myself. So yes, I think I'll be having another one. This definitely didn't scare me away from having kids and I'm pretty obsessed with him. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for those of you who wrote in to our insiders and for tuning in. I hope that you guys enjoyed my interview with Jeff Park. Certainly there's a lot of valuable information on school choice there. If this is something that you guys are interested in learning more about, please let me know and I will do more coverage on this in future episodes. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you guys enjoy your New Year's Eve and I'll see you next year. Bye.